Good morning, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins. Welcome to Financial Love Making. This is where we talk about love, life, money, and everything in between. I'm here with my good buddy, Miss S. Tia Brown, out of New York. How are you doing today, Tia? I'm doing great. How are you today? I'm doing really well. So I, I want to ask you, I, I, you know, we just got on the computer a few, a few seconds ago, but I'm curious, are, are things going good at, over at Ebony Magazine? Are you guys kicking butt and taking names? Yeah, of course, of course. And one of the things I really like about my job is that we get to kind of get previews to new shows coming out. So one of the shows that really piqued my interest is this new show on OWN called Flex and Shanice. Now, many of you remember Flex Alexander. You know, He was a, a hip-hop dancer like back in the late 80s, early 90s, and then he went to acting. He starred on that show One on One that had about five seasons on UPN. And he married Shanice, the singer from I Love Your Smile. Oh, you know, that is one of my favorite songs of all time. In fact, I'm going to download that on my Spotify after we get done because it's, it's one of my favorite songs ever. And, uh, and I'm wondering, has she had a lot of hits since that song? Or she that has, and now this song was a huge success for her. And you know, Shanice was a, a teenager when that song came out, and it kind of set the stage for what people assumed would be a grand career. And unfortunately, her career never really took off after that. Mm -hmm. When she got with Flex and they got married, you know, they had two kids, and he had success with his television shows, but. After 2006, when One on One ended, he hasn't really had a steady gig. And so when I saw that they were having this own special, I was really interested in kind of seeing what it was about. And it's really about their resilience as a couple with the highs of low and, and lows of Hollywood. Now, we always assume that, you know, if you're a couple and you kind of live modestly in Hollywood and you have some success, your career is kind of set. And that's just not the truth. So on this own special, we really see them kind of bouncing back financially after significant hardship. So they lost their home together. They had to move in with extended family just to kind of make ends meet. And they're really trying to get another another life, resurrect their careers in Hollywood. And, you know, in, in your 40s, especially as African-American actors and singers, it's really a challenge to get serious gigs. So... I say kudos to OWN for kind of giving their story a chance, right? And from the financial love-making perspective, I think it's a great tale of how two are better than one, right? They, they stayed together. Huge thing in Hollywood, yes, right? Well, you know, I, I was asking you earlier, I was like, well, who does that anymore? I mean, who, right. who, who actually stays together? I mean, that, 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 it's not like getting married means you're supposed to be with someone until death do you part, right? I mean, that's such a revolutionary idea, isn't it? Right. And, you know, another one of our tenets in financial lovemaking is, you know, try oral communication. And I can just only imagine the amount of communication that had to um, be in this relationship for them to be able to sustain the highs and lows. Another thing that they did was decide to down size their living. They had to move to a rental property and live with extended family. Mm. Now we know, you know, when you're when you're coming up as a couple, communal living is okay for a short period of time, but sometimes taking those two or three steps backwards after you've progressed in your career and your lifestyle is a huge challenge. You know, but financially it's rewarding, uh, you know, to sometimes change so you can make ends meet. But you know, I just was really impressed by what they've been willing to do. I also think when we talk about financial love making, we also think about the relationship between the couple, but really intimate financial relationships between other family members and friends are significant. And one of the things we're going to see in this show is how their other true friends in Hollywood have been supportive and how they've been able to get advice and just kind of build their comeback through those relationships. Mm. What do you think, boys? Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's an interesting story. Um, you know, it's, um, it's one thing to struggle in the beginning of your marriage. Uh, you know, I remember my parents living with my grandparents, each of my grandparents for, you know, for an extended period of time. And I didn't know that they were struggling as two 22, 23 year olds to, you know, try to get on their feet. I just thought it was cool that my grandmother was always around, you know, and, um, you know, but that that's one thing to struggle when you first starting off. It's another thing to struggle when you have become quote unquote, the successful ones of the family. Um, I think that people, um, one, one thing I will say is that uh, I have observed and uh, noticed that being rich, that rich and famous, those words don't always go together. They're not like peanut butter and jelly. Sometimes you just got peanut butter and it's sticking to the roof of your mouth. And so sometimes you're famous, which, uh, you know, 
has the expectation that you're rich. I mean, everybody looks at you like you're rich. They expect you to behave as a rich person, but the money is not coming in the way you thought. I mean, we talk about Mackay Pfeiffer going bankrupt. Absolutely. Um, you know, this is an actor who's been working. You know, who's got his who's had steady gigs, and you know, sometimes I find again, I'm, I've never been. Uh, a, a true celebrity. Um, I was only there was only one time where I was actually mobbed, where I literally had to go out the back door so people wouldn't ask for my autograph. I'm not kidding. It was it, it, it was it was actually kind of a, it, it was it's interesting because it was um it was an a, an interesting experience, a learning experience, but it was an experience that I wouldn't want to live on a regular basis because I think for people that live that life all the time, most of the ones and you you meet a lot of celebrities, but most of the celebs that I ask when I say. Uh, you know, do you enjoy the fact that everywhere you go, someone always knows who you are? Most of them say no. They, they, yeah. they don't enjoy it. And then on top of that, there's also just the expectation that uh, if you go to dinner with somebody, well, you're balling. Of course you're going to pay for dinner. Uh, you know, when you go out with your celebrity friends who might be doing well, well, you can't pretend like you're having – or you can't show them that you're having financial problems per se. They're going to – you know, you, it might make you feel a little bit awkward. Or so, you get booted out that circle if you can't. Keep up with the lifestyle. Exactly, exactly, and so I just think that the the pressure is huge, and you know, and I can't imagine the the amount of humility it took for them to go off to Hollywood, become successful for just a while, and then come back to family and admit, like, look, you know, we need to stay with you for a while, you know. And, and what I find is that the best way to kind of deal with that, um, once again, I you know, I, I'm not a famous person, but I'm more famous than all than most of my friends, right? Um, what I found is that. Uh, and this is and this isn't just for famous people. This is for anybody who's doing well, the doctor, the lawyer, the person, the family who's succeeding. I find that it's best to just take off the facade from the beginning. Like, don't you know, pretend like you have no financial problems. Don't pretend like you have an endless supply of money. And if you make that clear from the jump, then people won't expect you to have an infinite supply of money. They'll understand you have money problems like everybody else. So I flat out tell people like, look, you know, I, I'm, I do okay. I can pay my bills, but I'm not rich. You know, right. and, 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 and then on top of that, if I'm around somebody who I think is going to ask for money from me, I'll start talking about my money problems deliberately so they'll know, like, look, don't come, don't come <laughs> asking me for money. Look, I, you know, or you just do next month. There you go. I, I, I'll, throw, I'll throw you 20. I, I, might be, I might be good for $20, and that's it. Because right. you have to get rid of those expectations because I can't imagine the pressure they must have felt. But I have so much respect for this couple for the fact that they, you know, that they have rebuilt, that they've rebuilt together as a team, as yeah, a unit, as yeah. a family. So they understand that the family unit is more important than this artificial Hollywood, you know, facade. So, uh, so God bless them. I, I hope it works out for them. Definitely. I agree. Like you said, I think the biggest lesson here is that if you have a good partner, you have to be able to do the work during the good times and the bad. And financially, nothing is guaranteed. You can do everything right and things still go wrong. And it's up to that couple to have the resilience and commitment to make things work. You know, so we're, yeah, that's all you can really do. So I'm happy that Owen is taking a chance with this kind of story, and I hope that people support it. I'm going to be watching uh, next week, and you know, I, I don't really regularly give out you know uh, stamps of approval, but there are a couple that I'm rooting for, so I'm interested mm -hmm. to find out more about them. And we'd love to hear what you guys are thinking about this show. So check it out and let us know your thoughts. Thanks for tuning in. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have a good day, Tia. You too. Bye bye.